Hey everybody! In today's tutorial, I am going to do a very easy sky scene. This is one of my favorite ways to make a sky and some of my favorite colors to use in a little sky scene. I'm using the stamp sets Going Global and Beautiful Ride. These will be in the upcoming Stampin' Up! Occasions mini catalog, which you can get your hands on in January. And I've embossed both images on watercolor paper and also die cut using the circles framelits. Just a piece of removable label paper from Avery. This is a real inexpensive way to mask. And I'm putting this circle down so it sort of looks like the couple that I embossed from the stamp set are sort of sitting on the edge of the earth. I'm starting this guy scene with mint macaron ink. I don't know why I like to put green in these sort of nighttime sky scenes, but I really do. I'd probably freak out if I walked outside and the sky actually looked like this. But it's a beautiful combo for an outer space sky. So I'm just sponging all over the sky, and I'm sponging on top of the couple. Don't worry about it. I'm in a watercolor over that, so it doesn't matter if I get a little ink in there. The second color is Blackberry Bliss. A nice dramatic purple color for the sky. And then I'm going to finish it off with Night of Navy just to add a little bit of depth and darkness. I love that Big Dipper image. It's so much fun. So I'll make the edges even a little bit darker and then that just finishes my sky. I want the area around the couple to glow and so that's why I've left it intentionally lighter. And then I'm going to take, you can see I'd already cut an ornament out of just a scrap of this label paper, but where I cut this circle die out, I'm actually going to use that negative space as a mask as well, just so that I can sponge the earth image. And this has a skinny side and a fat side. I think I'm going to put the fat side up just so I don't accidentally get any sponging in the sky. And I'm positioning it just a little bit above the shape that I masked earlier, just because I don't want a white edge at the end of the earth. So it's okay if my sponging goes a little bit into that sky area. Now I'm starting with Sahara sand. I ultimately want the ground to be green, like they're sitting on grass, but I find that if you add a couple of browns underneath your green, you get a more interesting look kind of a textured look to the ground and the grass that I wouldn't if I were just using a single color. It's really the same for the sky too. I could have just made it all dark blue, but I don't think it would be as interesting. The second color was Tip Top Taupe, and this is Old Olive. And you can see how it just adds a little bit of interest down on the earth. So I've left the cup wall fairly untouched, even though there is some ink in there, but it doesn't matter. Like I said, I'm in a watercolor. And I'm just using my Koi watercolors here. I'm going to make it look like they're wearing jeans. So I'll begin by painting just their classic ultramarine blue on the bottom. Not worrying about too much detail at this point. And I have a pretty fine brush. This is a Winsor Newton watercolor brush, and it's pretty fine. Now, when you've embossed with white, like I have on watercolor paper, and the paper is white and the embossing is white, sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell what you're coloring. So I'm bringing the stamp image over here just as a guide so I don't accidentally, you know, color her clothing where her hair should be or something like that. I'm going to give her some kind of gold hair so I'm starting that just with just with a bright yellow and then I'll come in and add some other sort of brown tones to that. Having that image there really helps me. It's really hard like you can see there's a little bit of his hand 
over by her hair if you look at the stamp image over on the left side of your screen. And I want to make sure that I don't make mistakes and, and color on that. When I've done white embossing like this, or even if you just do clear and you're doing emboss resist on white paper, I do find that you need to make your colors just a little bit darker near the lines so you can sort of see the detail of the stamp if that's what you want to end up with. So I like to go in with some deeper tans here just near where those little brush strokes in her hair are just so you can see that definition that the artist that designed the stamp put in there. And I will just speed this up just a tiny bit. I just got back from On Stage Live in Dallas. This was the free stamp set that came in our bag. It's the one that also has the little Volkswagen bug. And you can check out a video I did on tie dyeing with watercolor. Here I used that image from this set. It just has some fun kind of 70s feeling images in it. And I just love it. I think it's really sweet. And the other set, the Going Global set, was a set that I was able to pre-order there. Like I said, the catalog starts on January 5th. So just let me know if you need a copy of it. There's some amazing stuff in there, some great dies. The die cutting this time is just absolutely incredible. Now to the blue and the red both, I'm adding violet as a shadow color. That always works well for me. And I'm trying to leave some areas light where it looks like they might be lit from the sky, either from above or for the front, where I've left that sort of glowing. What is that? Is that, I hope something isn't coming to get them from outer space, <laughs> from that glow. It sort of has kind of a Doctor Who look now that I think about it. But then after I've colored them all in, I do want that light that's coming from the front to look like it's casting a shadow behind them. And so I'm going to try to just very generally recreate what I think the shape of their shadow would be behind them from the way that they're sitting. So I'll actually bring it farther down and make it a little bit longer so that it more represents them in the, the, the glowing orb of the spaceship that is coming to get them, is illuminating them from the front. And they're casting a longer shadow on this little tiny planet that they're on. I realized after I made this planet so small that... Remember that illustration from the cover of The Little Prince? Where he's kind of big in relation to, to the planet. It sort of reminded me of that. But it's neat because it really gives you that curved look when you shade it like that. And I love it. I think it's kind of fun. So if you ever want a planetary shape, just use those circle framelits and you'll get a pretty realistic round shape. So there is the finished image. Pretty easy. Doesn't take a lot of time. And you can turn it into a super cute card with just some glimmer paper. And I had a little pennant with a sentiment from the Going Global set. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick little watercolor. Thanks so much for watching.